This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and it's my personal Groundhog Day. Why? Because we were at the same place, relatively speaking, a year ago. This is not the Microsoft Surface Pro. This is the Dell Latitude 5290 2-in-1. There's also a 5290 that's a laptop, just so they can keep you confused there. Anyway, about a year ago, I did the 5285 2-in-1, which, well, it's about the same story versus Surface Pro. We'll talk about that some, but what is it? This is the Surface Pro for you Dell lovers out there. There it is, Dell Latitude. You got the nice Dell logo. You have the kickstand. You have nearly identical to Surface Pro, the kind of type cover here, which they call the travel keyboard. It's really a very similar experience. They've improved the display. There's Intel 8th generation CPU inside. You can see where this is leading. Now it's getting interesting, right? Also, serviceable internals. We're going to look at it now. All right, so let's start with pricing. Dell says it starts at $899. This is a little uh, disingenuous of them because for $899, you don't get the Intel 8th gen version. It's actually a core i3 7th generation, very low in configuration. So really what we're going to be talking about here is the new 8th generation uh, configurations, and that starts at $1299. So it's fairly comparable to whatever Surface Pro model you're looking at with the same specs in any given configuration. So for $1299, you get a Core i5, you get 8 gigs of RAM and a 256 gig PCIe NVMe SSD. Now, one thing Dell tends to do if you go to their site and configure it is the price they give you tends to include a bundle of the keyboard, which they call the travel keyboard. It looks like a dead ringer for the type cover right here. And your choice of black, black, or, well, black, and the pen, which is the Dell right here. Here's the box for the PN557W pen, which is a lot like the 556 functionally. It just has a slightly different barrel design. So if you do happen to buy these separately, you somehow find them sold apart and not on Dell's website with the bundle, 130 bucks for the for the keyboard cover and the 60 bucks for the pen. But like I said, when I was pricing them on Dell's website, our configuration is pretty high end and it was $1,800 with all the stuff included. Again, you know, you probably won't go for the top line model that Dell happens to send us. There's a couple of odd and interesting variations going on though, just with the back cover, just like with last generation. There are different back cover options. And for example, this one has a fingerprint scanner. There's all sorts of security options here. There's a Windows Hello IR camera. There's TPM 2.0. There's a card, smart card reader, even on available for this and NFC as well. So the back cover is a variable there. Not that it's particularly easily removable or anything like that, but yeah. The kickstand on this is, again, it's, this is a clone of Surface Pro. We are not making any excuses for it here. That is what it is. However, it has less stability and rigidity, or rigidity across the whole line. There are places where it's more firm when you're poking at it. But it's improved from the previous generation where it was downright floppy in some of the positions here. So you can go pretty, pretty low here. I think this is about as low as most people are going to want to go, short of making it actually... Well, just close the kickstand and put it flat on the ground. Intel 8th generation KB Lake R CPUs, Core i5, Core i7, including vPro CPU options. We have the 8350U, in fact, vPro CPU inside. And you can get up to 16 gigs of RAM. You can get it with 8 gigs as well. And it's DDR3 low power. And you can get it with a SATA 3 or a PCIe NVMe SSD. It's an M.2 socket in there. We have the PCIe NVMe options, a 256 gig Toshiba drive, and the speeds on it are okay. They're not anything to say, wow, class leading or anything like that. But when you've got a chassis this small, I mean, this is insanely small, there's only so much they can push this thing just due to heat and thermals. Just like Surface Pro and just like the 82, the 5285 that preceded has a pogo pin magnetic connector like so. That thing is on there. It's pretty tight. You'd have to give it a pretty strong yank and pull from one corner to rip it off there. Exactly like the Surface Pro experience, which is to say I get along with that and I like it quite well. So I find it perfectly pleasant to type on. It's backlit. It has a large trackpad on here. It's, it's a nice solution unless you actually hate this kind of keyboard cover. Nice soft touch finish here and interesting mix of finishes here, which is you can see just show fingerprints like mad. You've got brushed metal here. You've got the matte finish here. And oh, well, ventilation all around the edges. It will get hot if you push it hard. I mean, you have a 15 watt Ultrabook quad core CPU in a 12.3 inch form factor machine. Um, 
it's not burning hot, but you're not going to want to hold it right over here when you're pushing it hard and doing video editing or whatever it is that you're doing that pushes this thing hard. It has the same brains as any Ultrabook, so it's in no way compromised in terms of performance. The same is also true of Surface Pro 2017, except for the fact that it's stuck in dual core land still. In terms of ports, this is where it kicks Surface Pro 2017's butt. You get two USB-C ports, which is the same for the last gen of this Latitude model as well. Now also optionally Thunderbolt 3. I'm really kind of impressed as I have they fit all of this electronics inside of this device at this point. You have a USB-A 3.0 port as well. You got micro SD card slot, optional LTE 4 4G and that's a Qualcomm Snapdragon X7 LTEA module if you want to get that as well. And of course a headphone jack too. Intel 8265 AC Wi-Fi is standard in ours. I believe it's also available with Qualcomm Athros if you have a strong preference for that over the Intel wireless card. Now what makes this really interesting is uh, you can actually take this apart and service it unlike Surface Pro which is glued together hell. This thing here, you unscrew the Torx screws from the bottom here where I'm pointing and then the Dell has it right in the owner's manual in the service guide. And then after that, you can actually work the display off. You start at the bottom near where the pogo pin connector is and go clockwise, and you can work off the display. It's held on with clips, not with glue. Inside, there is a socketed M2 SSD card slot, and you've got your Wi-Fi, your wireless cards that are socketed as well, and obviously you can access the battery. So, well, it's kind of refreshing, right? When it comes to weight, it's still just a little bit heavier than Surface Pro at 1.89 pounds, which is 857 grams. The Surface Pro Core i5 is 770 grams, so it's not a huge difference in weight. Now, with the keyboard, of course, it's going to get heavier, heavier 2.65 pounds, which is 1.2 kilograms. Performance on this, well, you can see the uh, benchmarks going across on the screen here, and it holds its own quite well, like I said, with any other dual quad, or quad core, rather, Ultrabook on the market. It's not going to beat the very fastest of them. Again, the Dell's own XPS 13 9370 that's got that kind of overclock thing going on to eke out 5 or 10% more performance than the average Ultrabook, but it, it really is pretty impressive. And like I said, you will hear the fans on this, but the fan is not particularly loud, but it can get pretty toasty on the back if you're pushing it hard. That is actually not surprising. The display on this has gotten even better. It's a sharp panel. I assume this is a sharp EXO panel given the display metrics that we've seen, particularly the color gamut and the high brightness. Last year we were pretty impressed with brightness. It's gone up even more. 532 nits. That is super duper bright. And the color gamut is better too. And then for a business product, this is actually very impressive. And I think they're also shooting for the creatives here. We got full sRGB and a 81% of Adobe RGB rather than the usual 73, 74, or 75%. So it's good stuff. The contrast ratio you can see on screen, that's also good. And the black level is not super low, but that's because we measure the display at maximum brightness. And when you're pushing that many nits, the black's just not going to get that black unless you have OLED. Like Surface Pro, it has a 3 by 2 aspect ratio display. Lower resolution though, it's 1920 by 1280. That's still pretty high resolution for a 12.3 inch panel, so I don't think anybody is going to complain. It certainly doesn't look anything other than very nice and it's not pixelated. So just like Surface Pro and also the Dell Latitude 5285 this replaces, this has a pen and it is a Wacom AES digitizer. Now Surface Pro uses Ntrig, so it's a little bit different. I have a slight preference for Wacom AES. It's a little bit more um, responsive for the pen, particularly it's noticeable when you're doing artwork. If you're just taking notes, I think either of them is going to make you happy. You've got 4,000 levels of pressure sensitivity with this. You have palm rejection, but like all of these active digitizers, palm rejection goes only so far. Once in a while, it's going to pick up a stray mark when your palm is resting on the display. If you're taking notes, it's probably not going to be too bad. If you're doing artwork, you know me, I always wear an art glove to make it better. And it actually is a good enough digitizer and a nice enough, fine enough display that I enjoy doing some art on this. And it's perfectly great for note taking as well. Battery life on this, well, is there a lot of room for a battery in here? Just take a look at it. You can say, no, there's not. And just like last year, there's two battery options, 32 watt hour or 42 watt hour. We have the 42 watt hour. I'm sure most of you would want to opt for that. More battery is always better. Battery life isn't that terrible though. We averaged about six hours with the display set at 160 nits and Wi-Fi on doing MS Office, streaming some Amazon Prime video, that sort of stuff. Not pushing it hard. Even some Photoshop in there. But if you're going to be doing things like serious video editing or compiling large programs, that sort of thing, you're going to get shorter run times. Obviously gaming, but this is not a gaming product. This is Intel UHD 620 graphics. It's not a gaming laptop. 
You can get it with a 45 watt or a 65 watt charger. We have the 45 watt. The 65 watt would charge faster and then Dell has their express charge thing and they say it can charge from 30 to 100% in about an hour and 20 minutes, which isn't as fast as ThinkPad's fast charging, but it's pretty decent and faster than the average laptop. Our charger has a USB-C connector on it, so that would take up one of your two USB-C ports on it. So that's the Dell Latitude 5292 in one. Again, it's available now and at price points similar to Surface Pro, which is to say it's not cheap, but Latitude is a business line. It never is cheap. And it has some really good positive points versus Surface Pro. Sure, maybe it's not quite as sexy, although it looks so close. I don't even know if you can say that other than the different color type covers that are available for a Surface Pro. But you've got Intel 8th generation CPUs for the win here, quad core versus the dual core still in Surface Pro. You've got two US USB-C ports, and now there's optional Thunderbolt 3 even, which is pretty amazing what they're cramming into the size of this chassis. And it's actually serviceable. You can remove the front display here by undoing the screws, like I said, without having to unglue it. And oh yeah, 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 yeah right? You know, so particularly for IT types, that's their point of joy right there, right? If, if the whole crew says, oh, we want Surface Pros, they're thinking, oh great, it's something we can never fix, right? Well, this is something that they can do repairs on. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.